So, have you guys ever had, like, a really bad supervisor? Like, maybe one who was just frustrating, annoying, a little bit of a jerk. But also one that was kind of weird in a really out there way. Because I have, and we're going to talk about that. First things first, before I jump into things, this particular picture, I think I'm going to start calling like this little segment where I talk about the picture just, hey, what you drawing? I might start working that in. I have no idea. But this picture is of a character named Willow. It's again, another kind of portrait picture of a character that goes along with the last few for my little series for the project I'm working on, which is anybody who was wondering, because I did have actually a couple people ask in the shocking amount of, of new people showing up to see my stuff. Uh, I've had a couple ask what the project is that I keep mentioning. The overall intention, we'll see what happens, so nothing is set in stone, but I would like to actually do it. It's going to be a webcomic, so long as I can get it going. I, my working title for it at the moment is Trace, and it's it's very early on. It's very early on, like we're talking, bleh, I can't talk today, but we're talking still nailing down like the main group's character designs. This is Willow, she ends up being the leader of the group. And she's dressed as a ballerina in this because she is a dancer. And that kind of, the majority of these characters are going to be college age. So she's a performing arts major. She is a dancer. She's been a, ba she's been a ballerina since she was a young girl. And that's about all I have right now for her. She's the most recent one to get a design. That said, um, for a bit, it's not going to be more portraits of these characters that's going to come next. Because with the convention that I got into coming up, I need to work on what I'm doing for that. So you're going to see a lot of my sticker designs, button designs, things like that on here for a little bit. And then it'll be back to the portraits and back to other art and things like that until I can kind of get things going. Again, this is... I've been kind of floored. I went from less than, less than 160, I believe subscribers to I think at the time of recording this I have 269 and haha it's got the funny number in there but I, I'm kind of floored and a little bit little bit intimidated let's hope that goes away but it's it's in a good way it's not a bad thing before I get going too much about that and about how stunned and floored I am because I have been freaking out a little bit in a good way Let's see about getting into the story. So like I said, I had a supervisor, not my first job, and where I'm at now is my third job. It was at my second job. And she was a very interesting character, is the best way I can put it. She was frustrating a lot of the times. She could be a jerk. She could be kind of mean and very, very micromanagey. She was one of those. But the biggest thing to me was along with just being frustrating and driving me up the wall because I have, at the time it was unmedicated and unmanaged, severe anxiety. And this woman was awful for my anxiety. And she was also like really weird in, in one particular way. Because I don't think that at least most other people, most other people, I know there have been other people who have dealt with this kind of thing because there is no way on earth that this is a unique experience because I could swear I've heard a story time somewhere, I'm not sure from who, of somebody who had a similar experience to me. But on that note, I don't think it's common for one of your direct supervisors to try and push you to, you know, hook up with and date their son. Yeah, I'm just gonna let that hang there and kind of sink in. Because that's what happened with this lady. So when I started at this place, it was a pharmacy, a very common pharmacy, at least in the U.S. I'm not sure where else they have it. I just know for a fact that in the U.S. it's a very common pharmacy and it's not the three letter one, but I'm not going to say what one it is to protect my own self, just in case. But I worked there. I started out in the photo section. At the time, we even processed uh, traditional film. We even had a machine that processed, like, traditional film, 35 millimeter, 
I love doing that part, especially because when I was in college, I did get to do a photography class and play around with actual film and developing photos, you know, the chemicals, the process, and it was honestly really enjoyable. I liked it a lot. I'll do college stories at one point, I think, and I'll talk about the, uh, the door into the dark room that would get stuck and trap you in just literal blackness for a while sometimes. And sometimes you'd be crowded in there with several people. I will talk about that later. Not right now. That'll come into play with some of my, uh, college stories because I have a couple of really bad college stories and really interesting ones, too. But for right now, let's focus on this. Like I said, I started out in photo. I did some stuff up at the front with the register, you know, working the point of sale system. But for the most part, I was listed as a photo tech. What you really did was you made sure that you swept everything at night, you cleaned the bathrooms, and you were the one who made sure everybody's photos came out right when they put in a digital order. You helped people with the photo kiosk and you stocked things. That was essentially what I did. Truck day was horrible and I hated it. But while I was there, one of the assistant managers, she wasn't the assistant manager whenever I actually got on there initially, but she was promoted there shortly after. And I know that I'm pretty sure one of the, at least I don't think she was. Somebody at one point got promoted to like assistant manager and I think it was over somebody else and the other person was not happy about it if I remember correctly. But I digress, I'm getting, I'm getting off track. So I don't have any notes this time. I probably should, especially with how I'm rambling. But I just kind of, I got home from work, I had a busy day, I sat down to record. So next time, I've learned notes. This, this lady, for one thing, it started out just, she was a very micromanage -y type of person. Everything that we did, she had to be right over your shoulder. Which was really frustrating, and I hated it. Because I can't stand that. You get me doing my job once I'm trained and leave me to do it myself and I'm fine. You put somebody over my shoulder, I'm making all kinds of mistakes and stupid mess ups that I shouldn't be making with as long as I've been there or with how well I was trained. It's like all my knowledge goes out the window and I start second guessing myself. I think it's the anxiety, but regardless, it's annoying. So there was that, she would get very very controlling. If you were doing something then and you weren't doing it like in the order she would usually do it, even if you end up with the same result, and I mean down to the way we stocked shelves and things like that, she would get very picky and frustrating. And she was very rude to a lot of us. I'm going to move my phone and put it on silent because rude. Don't interrupt me, please. Sorry. But she would be very, very frustrating for all of us because she was nitpicky. She was pretty rude a lot of the times if you messed up or you were clearly nervous or anxious about something or there was something going on like one bad thing even if it wasn't related to us and she would take it out on us i know there was an instant where my partner who worked with me there at the same time as i did got got injured actually and honestly should have been covered by workers comp but mm, i'm not gonna go into that because ooh, that'll make me angry real quick but she was, like, really, really rude to her about it. And not only that, like, apparently there were issues with, you know, papers for workers' comp just being lost and whatnot. Things like that. Something like that to that effect. I don't remember specifically what. I'll have to ask her and I may revisit this so I can have at least her give me some of the info. And I'll have other stories just of retail stories, retail horror stories at one point because I worked in retail for four years and it was horrible the whole time. The most frustrating though for me because she wasn't as mean to me, she would get that way sometimes, she would pick on me sometimes. Now the biggest problem for me was whenever sarcasm came into play. I struggle sometimes with that, I struggle with realizing somebody's picking with me because I just, I can't read those things very easily. I've always struggled with that sort of thing. And on top of that, she just had really bad and awful timing for this sort of thing. Because she got the bright idea that using the pharmacy phone, she was going to call up there and mess with me. So, <laughs> at the time, it was a busy moment. So I had a line of people. I'm trying to call for, um, we would call this thing, we would hit a button that would call for essentially more help to come up to the register. And she's using the pharmacy phone to call up to me, pretending to be a customer, mad about something, and asking to talk to a manager, and all of that. 
I think, I can't remember if it was asking to talk to a manager or asking to talk to the pharmacy. And I know it had something to do with coffee. So I want to say it was asking to talk to a manager. But I would, of course, put him on hold and call over the phone, give him a line. The line that, that whoever it was was on. Now, the problem with this was that because it was an internal call, you put it on hold, it hangs up. So I was very, and it didn't show me that it hung up. It would show me a line, but then it would hang up. And she kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And I, it took me forever to realize until like, I was legitimately, especially since I was juggling customers, I was freaking out. I was having a full blown anxiety attack. I was at the register getting extremely upset when there's a bunch of people already and I'm like near bawling. It, it was awful and it was horrible. And whenever she realized what was going on and came up there to tell me that, oh no, she was just playing a joke, she acted like it was my fault for getting upset. So that was one of the worst things. She would act like it was my fault if I got upset over something, despite the fact that I was very clearly an anxious person. That was very obvious. I got nervous easy. This wasn't like it was right when I was new. This was after I'd been there for a while. So the fact that I was nervous was not anything new. And it was so frustrating. It's like another time, I was having a full-blown panic attack. And I didn't know it was a panic attack, so I went to the hospital. I had to leave early, I had to go to the hospital, and of course I was at the ER. Around here there's like two, you've got one that's bad and one that's worse. I went to the one that at least for me was bad, because if you ask people which one's which, they'll give you a different answer. I went to the one that for me was bad, not worse, just because my mom knew people there. And I was there for hours. For hours. It was awful. When I finally got done and was told, oh, you're just having a panic attack. And I mean, I couldn't breathe. It felt like no matter how deeply I breathed, I couldn't get enough air. My face was flushed. I was getting, uh, I was having a full blown, very bad meltdown level panic attack. And like, I nearly fainted because I was, essentially because I was hyperventilating, trying to breathe enough. And I had to drive myself to the hospital. When I got out of there, I let them know what was going on. Now keep in mind, the doctors have told me take the rest of the day off because I was in a panic attack and I was still coming down from it. I get asked if I could come back and finish my shift. First off, there was like 30 minutes left. There was not that much time left. I was not going to drive like a good several minutes to finish out a few several minutes and then leave. Especially not when I'm still having a panic attack and the doctor told me to take the rest of the day. No, that's not what we're doing, no. And oh boy, this is already running longer than I expected it to. But to get into the weird, for some reason, for some reason, this lady was determined to try and hook me up with her son. I know he was about the same age as me. I didn't know much about him. I think he was also into nerdy stuff like me. But she was determined to try and get me to hook up with her son and date her son. Which is really weird, I feel like, of a supervisor to do. For one thing, it creates a really unhealthy and bad power imbalance. And also, you never know, and with the way she was, you never know how and how somebody's gonna be how somebody's gonna react like what if we had dated and then we broke up how bad was work going to be for me then and i have a small idea actually like she was determined like she um and especially because with how nervous i was and the fact that i knew that i worked with his mom i felt like i felt so trapped and cornered it was like i couldn't decline his friend request on facebook because, oh, well, she'd know, and what would happen, I don't know. I don't know what she's going to do or how she's going to react. And it, this went on for months. Thankfully, it didn't get too weird, but I still just think it's really weird to try and hook up your employee with your son. But not only that, like, she would have him bring me lunch whenever I had a shift that was long enough that I got a lunch break. Like, bring me lunch from a Chinese restaurant that was around here that she knew I liked, or from other places around here that she knew I liked. She would tell him the kind of thing that I liked and have him bring it to me. And she would tell me things like, well, you know, because he's on, he was on assistance for, 
I guess for, I think for, I'm actually 100% sure for a disability, but that's the most I can remember. Um, he told me that because he's on assistance, I wouldn't have to really worry about working because, you know, he'd have enough income to help us really well with being supported, which again, weird for another thing, no. And I was not subtle about the fact that me and my partner were together. We weren't. Like, we weren't open about it, but we weren't really so much hiding it either, not quite. And we both worked there, and we were both practically attached at the hip. It was not subtle. And of the two of us, I think it's hilarious, because I would expect that most people would expect me to be the one who's more obviously, you know, not straight. But people would pick it up on her just instantly. Not me. But for some reason, for her, they picked it up immediately, and I always... I always thought that was funny, but in this situation, it would have been very nice if, if that had been the case, that I, that it was picked up on for me, because this was so frustrating, and so awful, and I hated it. It was horrible, because she just kept pushing and pushing for months. She would try that, and try, and try, and try, and it got to a point where I was just so anxious, because I didn't know if I didn't put a stop to this somehow, what would happen? And even if I did, thank goodness that when it finally came to an end and I was like, look, I, I don't feel that way. It would be a good idea if maybe we just stayed friends or something like that. I got a little bit of an idea of what it would be like if things had gone bad because I finally did get up the courage because I was tired of it. It was making me so stressed out and so anxious that I did, you know, I was careful about it, but I was up front. And oh my gosh, her mood soured towards me so quick. It was like a flip. It was a night and day flip. And it was pretty daggone quick. To the point that whenever I got actually a job at the place I got on now, it was one reason I was so glad to get out of there, other than the fact that I was just so glad to escape retail. I was so glad to escape retail because I, ooh, like my current job, I have some issues, but I, mm, there's a reason I'm staying there instead of going to retail. Because especially around here, retail sucks. But whenever I did like put in an application at the place I'm at now, and when I did get on there, she told me that she didn't expect me to be able to do it. Because, oh, you're dealing with people in recovery, which that's not how she said it, but oh, you're dealing with them, so, you know, you can barely handle a customer. How are you going to deal with them? It was bad. Like, it was, it was really bad. Thankfully, I got out of there before things got too, too bad, and it was shortly after I let, you know, the guy down nicely. And on top of that, that's like another thing that kills me is just, I felt like that could be such a potential bad situation to be dating one of the supervisor's kids. It was just, I'm starting to talk in circles because I think I blocked a ton of this out because I do think it legitimately kind of traumatized me a little bit. This video shorter than I expected. I'll probably do a follow-up to this with other things regarding the supervisor because I know that after I finish this, I will remember a ton more. But I do hope you guys like this story. If you guys ever had any like really weird supervisors, please tell me. Like, I'm sure I'm not alone, but I like hearing that I'm not alone. This lady was ridiculous. And she was ridiculous and she micromanaged and she tried to set me up with her kid and she was nitpicky and she was rude. And oh my gosh, it was frustrating. Frustrating is the only word I have because it made my job awful because I never knew, I never knew what kind of mood she was going to be in. I never knew if things were going to go really bad or if they were going to get better because if she was in a bad mood, everybody had to be in a bad mood. I hated it, but even worse, I was like, oh gosh, what if this with her son goes bad and then she decides she hates me, which she clearly decided she didn't care much for me. And it just, mm, eh, that's the only thing I, that's the only thing I have left to express about it is just, eh. But please share your experiences. What kind of awful bosses have you guys had? I've, I've had other bad supervisors that I may have to cover at one point or another. Some of them may have to wait just in case anybody that I currently work with finds my YouTube. Like, well, anybody that I currently work with aside from one person in particular who I know is cool and she's awesome. And I love her, especially with all of her rainbow stuff that she wears to work and she's awesome. But that's, I think that's about it for this one. I, like I said, I know I will have more later to come back with on this, but this is definitely it for now. It won't stay it. 
I know it won't. I know for a fact it won't. But that is all for now. And like I said, please share your experiences below. Please. Because I cannot be the only one who's dealt with something crazy like this. And next time I am going to use notes because I know this was scattered and all over the place. But hopefully you guys still enjoyed it. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!